Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Impact7 and today I'm going to be talking about my, this is my spoiler review for Avengers Infinity War. Now the way I'm going to structure this is I'm going to have my positives, my negatives, my overall impressions and that'll be the end of my review. So let's get right into it. My positives. First of all, character interactions between the uh, heroes. Great. Really great. Um, the character interactions between, oh, um, between Spider-Man, Iron Man, Doctor Strange and Star Lord was really, really fun, particularly on um, on Titan. Um, the beginning of the movie I really enjoyed, where we see Thanos against Hulk. Really enjoyed that. The way um, Thanos was able to deal with Hulk really, really showed just how much of a threat he was right at the beginning of the movie. Um, the way Loki died was. <laughs> That was surprising. The way he just choked the life out of him was crazy, man. It was, and it was right in front of Thor as well. That that was emotion. So they really was able to kick things off with a bang right there and then. Um, then we move on to when the Black Order, um, Thanos's kids, show up on Earth, and the, one of them is a big hulking dude with an axe, and another one is what looked to have telekinesis as his power so it was those two against um iron man doctor strange bruce banner and um wong and it was a pretty good fight it was a pretty entertaining fight um both sides had good moments good hits on each other and um it was very entertaining it was very cool <laughs> bruce and uh, Hulk had a, dis they had a disagreement, so basically Bruce wasn't in the fight at all. Or Hulk, I should say, wasn't in the fight at all. It sounded like Hulk didn't want to get into the fight. He wasn't interested. After, after he got his butt kicked by Thanos, he was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want to fight no more. And uh, Which was a bit strange. I thought Hulk would have jumped at the chance to uh, beat up Thanos' kids and possibly get revenge. But nope, he wasn't interested in that. But um, in the end... It got down to um, uh, uh, the big guy with the axe and Iron Man, uh, and then Doctor Strange versus the guy who could use telekinesis. I think that's his power. But um, in the end, um, Doctor Strange got overwhelmed by by one of Thanos' kids, and he got taken up into their ship. Um, and then, at some point, Spider-Man comes in and helps out Iron Man with the uh, the big guy. And they were able to get to the ship and ultimately they were able to get inside and um, try and save Doctor Strange. In addition to that, we get to we get a bit of a scene between um, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Now in the comic books from what I remember, Scarlet Witch and Vision are a couple. So they were playing along that lines in this movie. Um, and it it looked as if the the soul stone, which um, not the soul stone, the mind stone, sorry, the mind stone. Um, he it looked as if um, the mind stone was warning uh, Vision about some coming threat that was coming, which was obviously Thanos and. At one point, two more of Thanos' kids, the Black Order, uh, show up and try to uh, take the uh, the Infinity Stone from, um, from Vision. You see in the trailer where Vision's on the floor and he has what looks to be like a similar scepter to that of uh, Loki from Avengers on, um, on, um, on Vision's head and he's screaming. Um, but thankfully for them, for uh, um, Vision and Scarlet Witch, Captain America and and his group show up just at the right time and they're able to deal with them. It was Captain America, Black Widow and uh, Falcon were able to show up and, and do their thing and, and help um, Scarlet Witch and Vision. And from what I remember, while they're on the, uh, the jet flying to what appears to be the Avengers home base that we saw in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron right at the end, um, the, uh, 
it would appear that uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision were supposed to keep in contact with Captain America and his people, but they went silent. Um, from what I understand, the excuse basically was, we want to be left alone. Which is fair enough, but obviously when something like this happens, it would really be important that they could contact you if necessary. But things sorted out, things went well. Um, then we get to the scene... Uh, we get to the scene where we see Thor and he meets uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. That was very funny, that was very cool, particularly the bit where uh, <laughs> it appears that Drax is trying to uh, uh, um, come on to Thor, where he's talking about, um, uh, he's talking to, um, he's talking about Thor to Star-Lord, and it's really funny the way he was going with it, it was really cool, and then you had Gamora uh, caressing Thor's muscles, and then Star-Lord trying to manipulate his voice to sound like uh, Thor, which, <laughs> which is very funny. Um, Thor... Thor, as you can imagine, he just... I don't really know what happened to the Asgardians, because it looked as if all the Asgardians were dead aside from Thor. Um, but after all that happened in Thor Ragnarok, and I believe we saw a scene where it showed where the Asgardians were going to live on Earth. They were basically going to bring Asgard to Earth. To go through all of that and then in Infinity War, it appears that there's no other uh, uh, Asgardian left except for Thor. Maybe Sif's still alive. Lady Sith. Um, but aside from that, that's it. So, he's basically, at the time of Infinity War, during Infinity War, I should say, he's basically the last Asgardian alive. And he wants to go to uh, 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 he wants to go to a place where he can he can get his weapon forged a brand new weapon which is supposed to be powerful enough to kill Thanos. So they te they um, the guardians separate. One team with Thor goes to the uh, the place where Thor can get his new weapon and then his new hammer. Or I think it's more like an axe than a hammer. And then the rest of the team uh, goes to Titan and tries to stop um, tries to stop Thanos. The teams, if I remember correctly, with Thor were Groot and Rocket. And then the team that went to Titan was Gamora, um, uh, Drax, and Star Lord. Now we transition over to the uh, the. We transition over to Titan, and just when Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and Spider Man get to uh, Titan, they crash land obviously because they can't con they can't um, control the ship, so they crash land, and then in comes the remaining group for uh, for the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they begin to get into a fight. It was really cool to see Star Lord and Iron Man have a fight. Uh, that was very cool. And then Iron Man goes up against Drax and he basically pins Drax down and basically puts a what looks to be a giant cannon in his face and basically warns him that he's going to blow his head off, um, which obviously he's not going to do. Um, and then Star-Lord has Spider-Man hostage while uh, Gamora and Doctor Strange are off to the side, uh, um, um, basically just waiting to see what happens. In the end, they're able to come to the conclusion that neither of them are with Thanos. Um, they're able to come together and in the end, they're able to come to a consensus that they can work together as a team, uh, mm, sort of like a team, and actually get the job done and try to beat Thanos because he's coming to them rather than them going to him. Now, in addition to that, just before the Guardians get to Titan, we see a scene where Thanos is at the Collector's home and he's basically threatening the Collector in order to get one of the Infinity Stones. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's the Reality Stone. Um, it's the, um, oh, what's it called? The Ether, I think it's called. That was in um, uh, Thor The Dark World. And the uh, Star Lords group gets there and it's just as uh, Thanos is threatening the uh, Collector. Um, Drax obviously is uh, hot-headed, but at the same time you can understand it, his entire family were killed thanks to uh, Thanos. So Drax goes, Drax tries to go in there first of all, 
Obviously, he gets wastelanded. Um, and then Gamora just go in there, and she does pretty well. She uh, <laughs> she's able to get uh, the jump on Thanos, and she was able to stab him in the neck and in the chest with a uh, with two separate uh, uh, weapons. At that point, it looks like Gamora was able to beat Thanos, but it's Thanos. So I I was a bit confused as to what was going on there because that could not be the end of the movie, and it wasn't because we finally see that he was using the Reality Stone to warp uh, reality. So in comes Thanos, looking cool, looking good, looking imposing as usual, and he basically hands Gamora um, hostage while Star Lord is. Um, got his weapon trained on Thanos and just before that while they were on the ship Gamora basically got uh, 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 Star-Lord to promise her that if for whatever reason Gamora is uh, get he's able Thanos is able to get Gamora Star-Lord is to kill Gamora because Gamora knows where the, the soul stone is precisely where it is so so um Stolo goes, Stolo obviously struggles with it because he, he has feelings for Gamora and in the end he has the courage to do what is necessary and he pulls the trigger but Thanos is able to manipulate his gun and what comes out instead of, uh, I think it's laser, laser bullets, instead of those it's actually bubbles, he basically turns it into a bubble gun and uh, Thanos basically goes on and he basically takes Gamora away and he put and he takes her to his ship on his ship they have a conversation um, at one stage I believe if I remember correctly Thanos also talks about because they're standing in front of a throne which I'm assuming Thanos stands uh, Thanos stands Thanos sits in most of the time basically when Gamora was was with them and he basically was talking about how he wanted Gamora to sit in that uh, uh, throne at, at some point. And he basically gets uh, to tell him where the uh, where the soul stone is. So off they go. They go to uh, uh, another planet and this really shocked me because I didn't think we'd ever see him again and that is Red Skull. Red Skull is on the planet where the Soul Stone is, and apparently, from what he was saying, Red Skull wanted the stones, wanted the Infinity Stones. He tried to get the uh, Soul Stone, but he couldn't because there is a uh, there is a uh, requirement that is necessary, and that is you have to sacrifice a soul that is important to you. You have to sacrifice a person that's important to you, basically. And Gamora gloats. Gamora. Um, laughs at Thanos because she believes that there is no one that he truly cares about where in actuality it's wrong um, he cares about Gamora and he's able to succeed in this in he's, he's able to succeed in getting the soul stone simply because of the fact he truly cared for Gamora um, there was a flashback where Thanos is and his forces are attacking Gamora's home and he has he, he meets Gamora, who looks like she's, what, five years old at the time? Maybe even less than that. And he basically saves her. And he gives her a, a double... How do I say it? It's basically a double-edged uh, knife. And um, he has her uh, uh, looking at him while his forces are basically um, killing half of the population. You see them line up in, in a row, uh, his forces. On one side are people who look to be the people who are going to live, on the other side are the people who are going to die. And you hear the, the, the gunfire and obviously when the camera pans up from Gamora and Thanos, you see that there's two sides, one side which is uh, uh, dead, the other side which is living. And um, that clearly illustrated what Thanos does. Um, he goes from planet to planet um, throughout the universes, throughout the universe, and basically wipes out half the population because he's trying to balance the universe. Now, the fact that the soul stone requires you to sacrifice a soul for which the person 
whose soul you sacrifice is someone you truly care about really helped to show the character I guess yeah to really show the character of Thanos where yes he's doing all these horrible things but he still has feelings he still has emotions and his emotion for Gamora is real and is very um, deep for him and the fact that Gamora died like that was really really interesting and definitely something that shocked me because I, I had no idea that the soul stone would have that sort of requirement but in the end he, it does have it um, and in the end Thanos was able to get the soul stone so after that he heads off to Titan where we have the uh, Iron Man and his, and his group waiting for Thanos so Thanos gets to, uh, to Titan which we find out is his home planet and he gets to the part where he basically shows um, he basically shows the group what it looked like before all the uh, before it looked the way it is now, which looks like a, a desolate planet where nothing lives there anymore. And they get into a fight where it looked like they actually had good teamwork, Iron Man and his group, where they instead of them trying to go head to head with uh, Thanos, what they intended to do was get the the Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, they were, able, they were focusing on getting the Infinity Gauntlet away from Thanos, which was a very good idea. Um, good piece of teamwork. Um, at one stage, they have uh, Thanos pinned down. Um, they're able to use their uh, combined abilities to hold Thanos and basically try to pull the uh, Infinity Gauntlet off of uh, Thanos' arm. At one stage, they're very close to doing it. Unfortunately, Star Lord uh, gets upset when um, Thanos basically reveals that Gamora's dead, and Star Lord gets upset, gets angry, and he starts punching, um, punching Thanos, which wakes him up from what Mantis was doing, which looked to be he, she was, I wouldn't say putting him to sleep, but putting him into a dream, let's say, where he wasn't necessarily. Fully aware of his surroundings, Thanos. Um, so obviously, with Star Lord punching Thanos, Thanos was able to wake up <clears throat> um, just at the moment where the Infinity Gauntlet came off of his arm. So he was able to grab that, and he was able to throw everyone away. And from then on, it was just a beatdown session, straight up beatdown session, um, to the point where he actually, uh, <clears throat> to the point where he actually gets Iron Man, who I must admit, Iron Man's new. Uh, Iron Man suit looked really cool. It had nanobots in it that allow him to manipulate the suit even more than what he normally was. He was able to create a, a sword from his arm. Um, he was able to, I believe in the trailer you see it as well, where he's flying up towards the ship when it was back on Earth earlier on in the movie and his legs were able to connect together and he was able to create one big uh, uh, jet boost which allowed him to fly even faster towards the ship. But um, Thanos was obviously doing his thing, beating beating people up, kicking people's asses, and at one point he basically breaks off the uh, the sword from uh, Iron Man's uh, suit, and he was able to stab Iron Man through the uh, through the uh, rib to gut area, and then he's basically going to kill uh, Iron Man, but Doctor Strange saves him, and he basically tells uh, 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 Thanos that. I'll give you the time stone if you allow uh, uh, Iron Man to live. Obviously, as you can imagine, Iron Man's not very keen on that idea because obviously giving um, Thanos the Infinity Stone is the last thing he wants, but um, uh, uh, Doctor Strange <clears throat> gives it to him anyway, and he leaves. And obviously, as you can imagine, Iron Man wasn't very too happy with that, but just before the fight between Iron Man and his, and his group and Thanos, Doctor Strange used the Time Stone to to view, what was that? I think it was like a million different um, different scenarios, different futures about what was about to happen. And they asked him, in how many scenarios did we win? And he said, one. So it was clear to me at that point when Doctor Strange willingly gave Thanos the stone that he had to do that in order for there to possibly be a victory. In any other scenario where he didn't give Thanos time stone, they would lose. 
So the fact they gave him the time stone clearly showed to me that that was the only way that they could win. Um, so now Thanos is going to Earth, <clears throat> and then at that stage we have Thor, who is working on getting his new um, getting his new weapon, which I think is called the Stormbreaker, if I remember correctly. And they're working on it. They have to restart a star. Uh, I think it's a Nova Star. I think it's called. Um, so we get to see Thor doing his thing, uh, showing off his muscles, um, and in the end, they ha have a. Uh, they basically have the the weapon sorted, the the blade and what looks to be the uh, no, it's the axe and then what looks to be sort of like the hammer part of it. The and unfortunately they don't have the hilt. Groot is able to use his ability and chopped off his arm and created the hilt for Thor to put the two um, ends together. So that what that's what um, Thor uses to uh, uses to uh, uh, wield his weapon. In addition to that, on their journey to uh, uh, the place to get his weapon, Rocket gives Thor a robotic eye, which when he first puts it in, he says that it doesn't necessarily it doesn't work but i think by the end of the movie it starts to actually work again so i um, thought doesn't wear the eye patch anymore um in addition to that once they've got that um we have the scene where we get to wakanda and at one stage we have they all understand that thanos and his uh black order are coming after uh, uh um come after vision so what they do is but captain america and his people arrive at wakanda because they, he understands that the best place to protect and uh, possibly even save vision is in wakanda so they arrive they arrive in wakanda captain america uh, a war machine he joined up with them uh, black widow bruce banner I'm not going to say Hulk because Hulk doesn't appear anymore and um, Falcon all arrive there and when they get there they find Bucky who's woken up who's been woke um, who was who you saw in Black Panther was uh, actually helping out uh, with what looked to be farming um, Black Panther was able to give him a new arm which looked to be made out of um, vibranium I'm thinking she would possibly create that for him She's the genius um, in Wakanda. So anyway, they get Vision to Shiri, and she basically talks about how she could possibly remove the uh, the Mind Stone from Vision without killing it. Okay, fair enough. Um, it's understandable. Um, so at this point, the invasion starts, where the Black Order and their forces, Thanos' forces, arrive to take out um, uh, Wakanda and get vision now <clears throat> at this stage uh, we find that Wakanda has an energy shield around the city which is understandable in order to protect their their people in order to make sure that no one finds them they need the force field around them not only to camouflage themselves camouflage themselves for the outside world but also to protect themselves so they have they have so many forces the black order and they just send them to the force field to try and find a new, uh, to find to try and find the way through the force field. And it was just a sea of them. And in the end, the bulk of the forces are attacking one area, and then they see the heroes see that there are a couple trailing off, trying to find another way around uh, to see if they can break through. They understand that strategic wise. If that happens and they allow the others to basically surround them, they won't be able to necessarily they won't be able to neutralize them. So what they do, what Black Panther does, is he gets uh, his people to basically open the force field at a specific location so that they can funnel the forces directly towards them, so they can keep them in front of them rather than anywhere else. So they engage, and it's a pretty cool fight. Um, Bruce Banner's in the Hulkbuster costume, and he. Hot Buster suit and he's doing his thing. Um, I told you, everyone's doing their thing. Um, Iron Man got a new shield. Um, Iron Man, Captain America got a new shield, and they're just fighting 
him and Black Panther are able to do a couple of uh, 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 team up. They're able to watch their back, watch each other backs while they're doing their thing. Um, and then at one stage, we have one of the one of the Black Order able to sneak into uh, Shuri's laboratory, and he's able to get into a conversation, conven confrontation with Vision, and they are what well, looks to be in like a wooded area where Vision and the Black Order member engage in combat. He gets the Black Order member gets um, gets the advantage over Vision, and uh, then at one point it appears like he's going to actually be able to get what he wants, and then he's stopped. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's by oh wow. Hmm. I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Captain America. I think it was Captain America who was able to stop the Black Order member from getting the Mind Stone from Vision. And then the Black Order guy was able to get the upper hand on Captain America and he's about to uh, 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 finish off Captain America where Vision comes up and stabs him with his own weapon and is able to kill him. Um, at another point we have Bruce Banner in the Hulkbuster up against the guy, the big guy with the axe, um, and gets into a good fight. The Black Order member rips off um, I, the I, the Hulkbuster costume's arm, and Bruce Banner does something pretty pretty cool. He gets the severed arm. He gets the arm, he's, he puts it onto the Black Order member's arm as well, and he fires off the, uh, the, the booster, and it sends the Black Order member flying into the, uh, into the energy shield, and he slowly disintegrates as his body is grated against the, uh, the, energy, against the energy shield. Um, at, this, at that stage is also the female uh, uh, Black Order member is up against... Scarlet Witch, Okoye, I think I said the name right, and Black Widow. And it was nice to see, particularly with Okoye and Black Widow, it was nice to see them work together as a cohesive unit. Now, from what I remember, they've never fought each other. They've never, they've never, they've never fought with each other. They've never met with each other until they actually meet up at Wakanda for the first time in this movie. So to see them actually working together... Um, able to take advantage of whatever the other's doing was really nice to see. It really showed that they have really good combat experience. Um, and at one point, and at one point Scarlet Witch is able to, uh, <laughs> Scarlet Witch is able to use her powers and throw uh, the Black Order member up into what looks like a, uh, basically into a meat grinder, basically. Um, just when she was about to take out Black Widow, which was, wow, that death, man. That death was crazy. But um, at this stage, in comes the big guy. In comes Thanos. And now Thanos has all the Infinity Stones except one, which is the one that Vision has. Now, Vision, at this stage, he's injured from his fight with the Black Order member. Um... And basically all the heroes go at Thanos. As you can imagine, mm, no luck. They just get thrown aside one by one. Um, I think if I remember correctly, the person who lasted the longest was Cap. Even though he basically doesn't really have anything special other than the fact that he's a super soldier. But you see in the, uh, in the trailers where Captain America is holding... Uh, Thanos' hand, <laughs> it's funny how two of Captain America's hands are just big enough to hold just two of Thanos' fingers. That was that whoa. <laughs> that was like, whoa. But in the end, Thanos was able to um, knock Captain America aside and Vision understands that no one can stop Thanos except for possibly Star Scarlet Witch, and what he meant by that was not going up against uh, Thanos, but to destroy the uh, the Mind Stone, which is in Vision's head. 
Obviously, as you can imagine, Scarlet Witch and Vision are, are a thing, so Scarlet Witch doesn't want to do that. So in the end, Vision was able to encourage her to do so because it's not he is not more important than the lives of so many other people. Um, so in the end, Scarlet Witch adheres to his wishes and destroys him, basically. Destroys the Mind Stone and destroys Vision in the process. Thanos, instead of gloating uh, and making fun of her, he actually... He actually... Oh, what's the right word for it? He actually... Um, he actually understands what she did and he basically comforts her and, and understands where he understands that she sacrificed someone he, she cared about for something greater. Thanos did that with Gamora and Thanos is able to use the time stone to reverse time just before uh, uh, um, Vision was destroyed and he was able to get the Mind Stone. The Mind Stone is implanted in the Infinity Gauntlet and he has all the powers now. And at this stage, <clears throat> where I'm thinking, uh oh, this is it. This is the end game. In comes Thor, looking badass, um, who, who, who arrived earlier. He comes in, thunder and all, and he basically throws his new Stormbreaker uh, weapon straight at Thanos. It hits him straight in the, uh, the gut, in the chest area, and I'm like, that was quick. That was good. I thought it was going to be like uh, like a minute to two minute fight where each are just showing off their powers and but nope. He throws the he throws the stormbreaker. Game over. Just that's it. And at that stage, I'm thinking, whoa, okay, 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 okay. This is this is interesting. And Thanos obviously he's screaming in agony. And in the end, he says, "You should have aimed for the head." Now, what he meant by that was was that Thanos still had the energy to lift off his finger and click. Which is reminiscent from the card from the uh, comics where all Thanos needed to do, and he mentioned this, was click his fingers and he could take out half of the population. I think not just on Earth, but on but throughout the universe. <clears throat> so we see from then onwards members of the Avengers start to disappear. Uh, we have Black Panther disappears. We have um, the front of Okoye. We have Winter Soldier disappears in front of Captain America. We have Scarlet Witch disappear while she's mourning over Vision. We have um, War Machine goes as well. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think War Machine goes. We have Spider Man. Spider Man was the most emotional one. Spider Man was the most emotional. He he was begging. Iron Man to save him in the end he right right before he goes away he's able to calm himself down and he disappears Doctor Strange disappears as well the fact that Doctor Strange disappeared clearly showed that he knew what was going to happen and he was willing to die in order to make sure that everyone else had an opportunity to beat Thanos um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of anybody else who goes um, Falcon goes as well um, I think if I remember correctly, the ones that were left were Hulk, well, Bruce Banner, Captain America, um, Black Widow, Thor. I think that was it. There was four of them. Hmm. I think I'm missing someone. I'm sure there was more than four, but I know those four were there. Um, and then we see a scene right at the end where Thanos is what looks to be on a planet where it's peaceful, it's calm, and he just sits down like he's content. I've done what I needed to do. I'm just going to chill. Um, and then we have a cutscene, a, a, a cutscene, a uh, post credit scene where we see Nick Fury and Agent Hill. They both disappear. But just before then, um, Nick Fury was looked to be having a communicator and he was trying to communicate with someone but obviously disappears just before he's able to get a response and on the screen we see the symbol for Captain Marvel which is uh, uh, teasing Captain Marvel who's probably going to be in the, in the next Avengers going to help them out but um, overall 
I really enjoyed the movie. But let me get to my negatives quickly. <clears throat> negatives, mainly too many characters, man. Too many characters. It was... The, the fact that there were so many characters meant that there wasn't enough time for there to be more in-depth scenes where you could actually get in-depth with the characters, um, understand what they're doing. Um, like, for example, Captain America's team. Black Widow, when did he, when did she suddenly join up with Captain America again? Don't know. Where, where was um, Hawkeye? Where was Ant-Man? Don't know. Not a clue. Not a clue. So, it was a bit, um, I wouldn't say convoluted is the right word, but it was definitely packed with so much that the uh, Russo brothers, the directors, had to find a way to fit all these characters in while still making the while still making the story work and they were able to do it but still I think there were too many characters too many there were so many things going on it was exhausting um, but on, honestly I'm trying to think but that is about all I could think of for negatives to be honest um, the the soundtrack was not memorable. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to nitpick here because I can't really think of anything that was really negative that stood out to me. Um, maybe, I guess maybe I could say the Black Order, except for the guy who could use telekinesis were very disappointing. Um, they weren't as imposing as I thought they would be. But aside from that, that's about it for the negatives three negatives and they weren't really that big um my overall impressions this is a very good movie very good movie what the russo brothers were able to do with so many characters and make it entertaining make it emotional make it eye uh eye catching make it eye popping really jaw dropping oh my days when i left the theater i was completely and utterly drained i was <laughs> i was unbelievably tired from that movie that was because two hours and a half, definitely, they needed every single minute of that two hours and a half because it was non-stop, it was exhilarating, it was truly a very, very good movie. And um, the Russo Brothers did a very good job. They had to do a very, very good job on editing. They had to, because with the amount of things that were going on, if they did the editing similar to what uh, Warner Brothers did with Batman v Superman, this movie would be unwatchable. But they were able to do so. Um, they were able to take their time, the, the CGI looked good, the dialogue was funny, um, it, it all had meaning, um, the acting was on point, um, and everyone was able to carry on where their characters left off in whatever movie they appeared in previously. And the fact that they were able to use Wakanda the way, they did, the way that they did straight after the, the success of Black Panther was really a good move. Um, so overall, would I put this? Would I put Avengers: Infinity War in my top three? I would say yes. I'd put Avengers: Infinity War in my top three of Marvel movies. Top three would be Civil War, Avengers, and then Infinity War. That would be my top three. Uh, with Black Panther four, and then um, uh, um, uh, Thor: Ragnarok fifth. Um, I highly recommend you watching this, particularly in a in a cinema. Don't wait until it comes out on home cinema. Really get the experience of uh, watching it in uh, uh, IMAX, particularly. Unfortunately, nowadays cinemas offer it in both IMAX and 3D. Unfortunately, mainly to just get you to pay more money. But um, definitely watch it in the cinema. I do highly recommend it, particularly if you're a fan of uh, superheroes in general. Uh, definitely go watch it. <clears throat> Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else. Um, character interaction was good. Dialogue was good. Um, nice to see Pepper. Um, was nice to see um, Tony and Pepper possibly getting back together again. Um, no, I think that's. I think that's it really. That I can think of. Okay. That's it for my uh, spoiler review. I have to thank everyone who's watched. We do appreciate it. I know it was a bit 
all over the place, but um, I was doing this from memory, so I do apologize. I watched it on Thursday, so I had to really remember from uh, three days ago, but aside from that, thank you very much for watching. If you want to keep up with my latest information, please follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Discord. It's all free as usual. Or in the description box down below. So after that, please don't forget to hit that like button, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again in my next video. Also, let me know how you felt about Infinity War. Let me know in the, the, in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again in my next video. Latest.